Hello everyone, this is Showtime 112. People's Republic of China signed the Treaty of Friendship, Alliance and Mutual Assistance with the Soviet Union in February 1950. It included Soviet assistance in training a modern air force, but also air defense for key facilities until Chinese units gained adequate experience. Soviets deployed a number of piston-engine aircraft, but also their latest MiG-15 jet fighters to China, and some of them were engaged in combat against the Chinese nationalist forces. MiG-15s were credited with shooting down one reconnaissance F-5 Lightning and one B-24 Liberator in April and May 1950. From July, Soviet aviation units were no longer involved in combat, and they focused on training Chinese pilots. But this situation was about to be changed by the events in the Korean Peninsula. After the initial success against the South, North Korean units were pushed back by UN forces led by the USA. People's Republic of China perceived this as a threat, and once UN troops crossed the 38th parallel, the decision was made to come to North Korea's assistance. Soviet Air Force units deployed in China were given the task of air cover for Chinese ground troops. Two fighter aircraft divisions, 151st and 28th, comprising of two regiments each deployed to airfields of Anshan, Mukden and Liaoyang. Those were former Japanese fighter bases, barely suitable for jet operations. In order to mask Soviet participation in the conflict, the airplanes carried People's Republic of China insignia and pilots were given Chinese uniforms. They were also not allowed to fly south of Wosan Pyongyang line or over the sea to avoid capture by the UN forces. UN side first became aware of mixed presence on October 31st when F-51 Mustangs spotted some of them just across the Yalu River. The next day saw the first combat of the war by MiG-15s when a flight led by a 16 Victory Ace Major Stroikov attacked Mustangs of the 67th Squadron. One Mustang was shot down, although there is no mention of it in American sources. The combat was described in detail in an earlier video on this channel. But the fighting on November the 1st wasn't over. Another flight of MiG-15s was sent towards Yalu River at about 3 p.m. Four airplanes from the 72nd Guards Regiment led by Major Bordun arrived over the North Korean border, but were then told by ground control to return to Ashan. However, they were soon directed back to Antung area to repel an enemy airstrike. Major Bordun, along with senior Lieutenant Hominich and Lieutenant Suhov, turned south again, but Lieutenant Esunin returned to base as he wasn't carrying drop tanks and was running low on fuel. At 3.55, senior Lieutenant Hominich spotted a formation of 10 F-80 shooting stars at 4,500 meters. F-80, originally designated P-80, was the first American operational jet fighter. It first flew in early 1944 and it saw limited operational service in Italy during World War II, but it was not engaged in actual combat during this conflict. When the Korean War started, it was the only jet available to US Air Force in the theater and it was used as an air superiority fighter. The arrival of Soviet MiG-15 would relegate the shooting star to fighter-bomber duty, in which it served for a good part of the war. Senior Lieutenant Hominich was now positioning himself for an attack on the lead element. Sources differ in description and he either attacked from the sun, which suggests from the above, or from below the enemy formation. He opened fire from about 200 meters and claimed the kill.
One source mentions that other Nix performed attacks too, which made the F-80 formation scatter. American sources don't record any combat with Nix on that day, but they do show the loss of one shooting star. It was flown by Captain Frank Van Sickle of 16th Fighter Intercept Squadron, and it was reportedly lost to anti-aircraft defense over Sinuiju airfield. Captain Van Sickle was killed. If the claim by senior Lieutenant Hominich is true, this would make it the first ever jet versus jet victory. However, it is questionable. Soviet ground team was sent to find the wreck and confirm the kill, but they never succeeded in finding it. Theoretically, the airplane could have exploded and scattered into small pieces. It could have crashed into Yalu River or into the sea. It is also unusual that 9 F-80 pilots didn't notice a mix shooting down an aircraft in their formation. A cover-up is a possible explanation, but now we are entering heavy speculation territory. Exactly one week later, an F-80 pilot would claim a kill over a MiG-15, and that is usually described as the first jet vs. jet aerial victory. That one, however, is similarly disputable because Soviet sources claim the MiG-15 survived, but that is a story for another video. If you like this one, be sure to press the like button. This requires minimum effort, but it greatly helps the channel. You can help even more by joining our Patreon supporters or by donating on PayPal. Thank you and keep watching Showtime 112.